All right. So if we, um, I'm looking to see how many participants participants we have, because if you'd like to unmute yourself, I'd like to have more of a conversation with you guys about my topic. Um, and so if I don't have to unmute you, or if we don't have to rely on chat, if everyone can be respectful, we can all un unmute unless you guys have like background noise or something going on that might be too loud. Because um, I really would like to just have a conversation with you about how do you turn an idea into a game concept. Um, my name is Heather Chandler. Uh, they already kind of told you a little bit about what I do. And my role as a producer, I am definitely focused on helping people um, hone in on what the actual game's going to be. Because I'm sure that as you guys were making uh, your game ideas, you came up with probably a lot of different ideas, but then it was like, well, how do I turn this into a game? So that is what I'm gonna talk about here. All right, hang on here. I practiced this beforehand, but now it's now that it's live, it's more daunting. <laughs> All right, let me share my screen real quick. All right. Awesome. All right, an idea is just the beginning. How to go from an idea to a game concept. First of all, um, I'd like to hear, how did some of you guys think of the ideas that you had for the games that you made? May I answer? Absolutely. Thanks. Um, for me, I just took a few days to kind of just have a brainstorming session with myself. I didn't really, to be honest, I didn't really set anything in place. I just kind of thought I came up with a bunch of ideas and just wrote them down, started experimenting. And then I came up with the idea of having a character who'd throw seeds where that can plant trees. And that's the one I just kind of took and ran with. Yeah, that's wonderful. So you use the good old brainstorm session. Um, when you do a brainstorming session, a lot of times on game development teams, we do this with large groups. So we have a lot of folks in the room. One of the cardinal rules of the brainstorm session, and perhaps you could talk a little bit about the good ideas and the bad ideas, is that you, gosh, you don't, um, everybody's idea is good. And when you're brainstorming, you write everything up on the board. I'm used to doing this in front of a whiteboard. You don't criticize the idea. You just let everything flow. I've been in sessions sometimes where people start immediately critiquing the idea, like, oh, this would work or this won't work. Um, but that really kind of, you know, messes up the energy and flow of a brainstorm session. So a brainstorm is really just that. You just let everything come out and you record it. Then after the fact, you can go and start kind of honing in and, and um, narrow down some of the ideas that you got. Um, how many folks relied on research to, I know that you guys had some themes that you were doing. Did anybody research their theme to get inspired for an idea? Um, I did because I had the environment category and I, in my video, I said, because I did a science project about climate change, I had done it right that spring. And so I used some of the research from that for my game. That's wonderful. So yeah, research is a good idea. Um, you can do research on a theme. Um, so that kind of goes with pick a theme to explore. You can also research what people like to play. So you could look at what games are popular and say, hmm, uh, is this game going to, can I make a version of this game that would be popular or is this game very popular and it's now time for something new? Um, another thing to do is you can improve an existing game. So did any of you have um, a game mechanic in mind from a, a game that you already enjoyed playing? Tetris did come up a lot um, in the interview. So you would think, hmm, how can I make Tetris better or more interesting? Did anybody start with kind of an idea from an existing game? When I was doing mine, not sure if you can hear this or not, yeah, we but can hear I it. was going through like Rayman and Legends and the background, it was really involved in the entire game. And I decided to like bring that into my game and prove like some of the more technical features of several different games. And Wonderful. took like the best elements. That's great. Um, we talked a little bit about themes, so you guys were presented with themes, so that's always good to kind of figure out, especially if it, the theme is something where you want to create a game where not only are you making something fun, but you want somebody to come away 
with a bit more information about that topic. I'm not going to say educational game, but certainly there are ways to make very fun games that also, you know, present a point of view or give the player something to think about after the fact. Um, other things, you can start by asking a question. So you think of a question to answer. What if, you know, supervillains took over New York City? You know, that's a very silly one, but then you start thinking, okay, well, what would that look like? And you answer that question. Did anybody start with a question that they wanted to answer? All right. But, um, and so you can do that. You can combine things. Um, that's where you take kind of two different genres and you figure out a fun way to combine them. A long, long time ago, there used to be point and click adventure games where you would go through a world and you would point and click and it was very slow paced. Then they decided to combine it with the action genre, which was at that time was you had a third person character that you would control in an environment and you would engage like a Zelda game. So then when you combine the true adventure point and click with the action piece, you got the action adventure, which is what a lot of games are now today. You go exploring, then you have a little bit of action. So there's things like that to combine things, or there's a game called Puzzle Quest, where it's a puzzle game. This came out a long time ago, and you level up like a role-playing game. Um, did anybody, any of y'all combine genres? Yeah. Um, for my game, the genres that I kind of combined were like a stealth aspect and stealth games because you had to hide from enemy robots, but also kind of like an action and like um, open space games where you can roam around and explore. Yeah, absolutely. And then another way is you, you think of something to restrict. So whenever you have an idea, if you get stumped and you're trying to have a brainstorming session, then you think about, well, what if I removed this element? What does that turn it into? What ideas can spark me? What if I added this? So there's lots of different ways to kind of spark that uh, idea and curiosity. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about creating, collaborating, and sharing. I talk a lot to, to folks who want to make games and they're like, I really have this amazing game idea, but I don't want to tell you what it is because then I'm afraid someone's going to steal it and make this game. And I appreciate that, you know, and I understand the thinking behind that, but what do you think happens if you don't share your idea? It doesn't come to fruition. It won't probably won't come to fruition. The idea is just the beginning. How many of you started out with your idea for the game? And then as you started making your game, you found out that the game you made is a little bit different than maybe what you had in your head to begin with because you ran into different problems along the way, or you thought you were going to go in this one direction, but you got inspired by something else. So you went in this different direction. I would say, you know, look at how many match three puzzle games there are out there. It's a very simple idea. Oh, match three things and then something happens. But look at all the different ways that it has been executed on. So I like to say an idea is just an idea until you make something with it. And people can come up with ideas all day long, but it's until somebody actually does something with that idea and builds some meat around it, does it turn into an actual game. You can start with the same idea and get very different uh, con uh, concepts. And if you're collaborating with people, then you get inspiration from other people and you could make your game better because you might talk to somebody and be like, wow, I never thought of it like that. I'm inspired now to kind of change something in my game or improve it. So, you know, when you collaborate and share these ideas, you're going to be able to come up with stronger concepts that you can then execute on. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the difference between what an idea is versus a concept. Um, you know, a, the concept happens at the beginning, you know, you can either do it as a design document where you flesh out that concept, or you can do it as a prototype, where you prototype this concept and kind of see what people think. But you know, idea is the spark, but a concept goes into the genre. What's the main gameplay interaction? Is it a point and click? Is it a shooting game? Is it a puzzle game? Uh, the narrative, you know, what is the game world like? What are the characters? Is there a story to it? And then the style. So I'm sure all of you have played a wide variety of games. Among Us is very cartoony. You get a game like Call of Duty and it's very realistic. Um, you know, very, very different games and very and the art style has a lot to do with it. And then you also wanna think about who are you making this game for? Now with this competition, 
were you thinking about, okay, I'm making this game for kids, you know, eight to 14 years old, or I'm making this game for people who enjoy playing, you know, historical board games. So when you think about who the game is for, that will also kind of feed into your concept and help um, elevate the idea. Okay, so I thought for the interactive section, I, oh, hang on, now I've got to switch to this other thing here. All right, so what I wanted to do is, you know, get some ideas from you guys. Let's brainstorm some ideas and then see if we can come up with a couple concepts by the end of our session, which I think we probably have about maybe 10 minutes left. So feel free if you want to use the raise your hand function or just throw out an idea, I'll, I'll type it on here. We'll pretend like we're in front of a whiteboard. Okay, yes. I can't see the names, but yeah. yeah. Um, so one idea I had for a while now was kind of like a fighting or combat game, but instead of having like set anim animations for the characters, it could be physics based. So everyone's kind of just flopping around trying to like fight each other. I feel like that'd be a pretty funny idea. Yeah, I'm going to call it floppy physics. All right. What other ideas do y'all have? That's a good start. Um, I was kind of like thinking that sort of like I've been thinking about this idea for a while I'm wondering about doing it it's basically like so you've got like it's like a normal RPG where you've got like fighting um, moves and like spells but instead you there's this thing that you can like use there's these points that you've got to use to use abilities and then there's like this massive transformation where you've got to try and like the more points you get, like the better transformation, but you might want to go lower transformations because it gives different abilities. Okay. I love that idea. Equals more, better, bigger transformation. Yeah, and you can only do, uh, do it once. So you need points for abilities and then you also need points for transformation, but you can only do transformation once. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Got it. I think points, transformation. We can, we can go delve into that a little bit deeper. All right, any other ideas? All right, I'll give you five, five more seconds to shout out some ideas here. An RPG where you have to like, um, or an RPG where you have to like uh, do some, uh, perform some mini game, like beat the mini game in order to attack. Okay, great, cool. Now, um, this, these are great ideas. So what did you, what do you notice about the ideas that this group came up with? What's the one common thing they had as when they were explaining what the idea was? Fighting. Fighting, but also they were talked about in game terms. So you guys are already thinking about um, the genre, which was the first thing we're gonna be talking about. So does everybody understand what it means when I say a game genre? A game genre just defines sort of what the key player interaction is. So a fighting game, something like Mortal Kombat is traditionally thought of as player versus player in some type of arena where you have special moves that you do things. You know, a first person shooter like Call of Duty involves the first person view and you go around and you, you shoot things. Um, Fortnite is, you know, that genre is a battle royale, but it's kind of a hybrid genre of a shooting game and a building game. So they combine basically building from Minecraft and then third person shooting in a last man standing sort of hundred person thing. So a battle royale is a genre, but it is a hybrid of different genres. Um, for the genres that we talked about above, we had a fighting combat game. Now, were you thinking um, that that was a uh, battle Royale type fighting combat game? Was it a one-to-one, -one, like a Mortal Kombat? What are some examples of genres that we could look at now to apply to either the fighting game or the RPG game? I was thinking uh, for the fighting game, it'd be more of like a 1v1 situation, but I guess it could work also as a Battle Royale. It kind of just depends how you want the game to feel. 1v1 would be like more competitive, whereas a Battle Royale would kind of be like chaos because everyone's kind of would just be flopping around, yep. but yeah. Um, and we talked about RPGs. Do you guys, can you think of different ways people use RPG role-playing games where you're developing a character? What are some of the common 
earmarks with RPG games that people enjoy? For me, um, in an RPG game, one part of that game that I really enjoy are the bas boss battles where you just are fighting one big enemy and you've got to use like specific items or specific strategies. Those have already, always been fun for me. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, that made me think I... of strategy games. So do any of y'all play either turn-based strategy games? Um, I'm not sure if there's any super popular turn-based strategy games now, but when I started making games a long time ago, there was Command and Conquer, um, or was that a real-time? Anyway, there's turn-based and real-time strategy games where you're setting units up basically on a board and trying to strategically, you know, complete your objectives and, and get to victory. Right. So what if we were to take, how does this change any of the ideas that we talked about? So the floppy physics one, we said, yeah, it could either be a battle royale game or it could be a fighting game. So do you think that that's going to change how you would execute on that idea? Yeah, probably a little bit. Probably by quite a bit. If you're going to do a battle royale game, you've got to start thinking, how am I going to get 100 players on the screen? It, there's a lot of technical issues to solve. A fighting one versus one game from a technical standpoint probably would be a little bit easier. So this is where you start kind of thinking about the scope of what you can do. Are you a one person development team? If so, then you probably want to stick with an idea that is going to be um, within your means to do. So how many of you guys were one person development teams? Probably most of you. And did that impact the types of things that you were able to do or wanted to do on your game? Nope. It didn't, that's great. And how were you able to, to overcome that? Because you did everything on the game. All right, yeah, when you're a one person team, like most of you are, that means you're doing the art design programming and you have to think about um, how this is gonna change your idea and your genre. The next thing you wanna be thinking about is the narrative. So we've got some interesting ideas, the transformation, the transformation RPG, what sort of narrative are you thinking? What is the story, the world, the characters? What does that be like? Honestly, it could be like literally anything for like the narrative. It could be like dungeon explorer. It could be like an environment explorer. It could even be like a space one. Doesn't really matter as long as we can come up with an interesting idea, which is gonna actually captivate the audience. Yeah. Keep them interested. And the puzzle RPG game where you do many games, what sorts of narratives do you think would be interesting for that? Yeah, I think the same ones would be like applicable, maybe like where you're exploring one on land or exploring the sea. Yep. And so when you think about that, and then what types of characters would these things have? So if we did a land versus sea, what sort of characters were you think? Like uh, there's like two categories. So one are, one have like water based moves, and uh, another have like uh, grass based moves, and then they have uh, like different mini games for uh, each type, maybe. Yeah, and so maybe maybe you have sea creatures as instead of humans as a character. Maybe it's sea creature versus land creatures. Maybe it is if you're in the space. Maybe it's this alien race versus that alien race, which is also super popular. So when you start thinking about here's my core genre, here's what I think the mechanics are going to be like, then you can you can also start thinking about your narrative and the world that you want to create and what you want the players to inhabit. That changes the idea a lot too, because as you start thinking about the narrative and what that might be like for the player, then you're going to start thinking about the art style. So tell me some of your favorite games that you enjoy playing right now. Ori in the Blind Forest. Ori, oh, so that's a cool game. game. Okay, what it's else? Like, hey, Heather, we've got uh, about a minute left on our timing, just oh. so you know. Okay, great. So we'll, so very quickly, Ori in the Blind Forest, that's a beautiful, arted up, beautifully 2D game. There is, you know, um, Among Us, which is very fun and cartoony. There is Minecraft, right? Which from an art perspective is not that much to look at unless you apply those mods. 
There is a game like Fortnite that's very cartoony and, and Looney Tunes like. There's Call of Duty, very realistic, any of the Tom Clancy games. These are all going to impact how you do the concept as well. And based on, again, your skill and scope as a development team, you're going to pick pixel, pixel art because that's something that you can easily do versus fully 3D rendered models. Or maybe you have a 100 person development team and you can have a bunch of three, fully 3D animated models. Um, target audience, again, you're thinking about who are you making this game for? That's going to change it. If you make it for kids, it's going to have a different vibe to it than if you make it for adults. Adults are diff interested in different content. So when you thought about the ideas you were making for this challenge, um, if you thought, hey, I'm going to gear it towards kids my age, is that different than what you would have done if you had geared it towards an adult player? All right. And so at the end, we started with a couple original ideas. Now that we have what, probably 30 seconds, does anybody wanna combine all the stuff we talked about and maybe say, hey, we started with a floppy physics idea or we started with a mini game RPG or a transformation RPG. Does anybody uh, want to share how they might combine different things to turn it out and turn it into a little bit more of a concept? Yeah, so for the floppy physics one, you could combine all of the things you talked about. You could do different narratives. So like you could change your map from like land to space. You could also make it geared towards just younger kids, but still have it like general enough so that anyone can play it. And maybe you could expand from there, add power-ups and different things. Yep. And then the, when you'll go to a presentation that Virginia is giving about finding the fun. So her thing is all about once you have this concept, um, so think about this, like what you do to get the concept, and then think about how she talks about how you figure out if the game is fun or not. Because there's so many different things that go into making these games. Um, some are just your heart and your feeling, like what you're passionate about making. And then once you've made it, you need to figure out, do other people feel the same way about it? And if they do, great. And if they don't, what are some ways that I can tweak the concept to make it more appealing to people. All right, do you all have any questions? All right, well, it was very wonderful chatting with you guys today. And of course, I really loved seeing all of you talk about the games that you made and congratulations to winners. And um, you know, feel free to reach out to me. I have a website called heathermakesgames.com and it's got my contact information on there. So if you have questions or just want to get in touch later, feel free to do so. Cool. Thank you, Heather. You're welcome.